Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to discuss how to better contain SCP-096. So let's get started. Item number SCP-096, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-096 is to be contained in its cell, a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory, and there are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure SCP-096's presence inside the cell. Any and all photos, video, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. Black Box and O5 Black Box. Okay, so we, we know SCP-096, and we're going to split this again, or at least try anyway, to split this into three sections. First of all, we'll talk about the containment procedures as they are, and... <laughs> And maybe some of the flaws inherent in the way they're written. First of all, this is very this is classic SCP, so a ser classic series one SCP stuff, uh, which contains just so many many problems. So it's to be contained in its cell, which is a five meter by five meter by five meter airtight steel cube. When creating your containment procedures, consider for a moment whether or not you need to be this explicit, because be this is. Containment procedures are strictly prescriptive, right? If for some reason they discover that SCP-096, which necessarily need not be viewed, so it's very important to keep it from being viewed, is in a 5.06 meter by 5.1 uh, by 4.93 meter cube, they have to change it. And I know it seems silly and stupid, and that's because it is, but the SCP Foundation's containment procedures are exact for a reason. If they're exact for no reason, you've screwed it up. And in this particular case, I, it feels very much like it's been screwed up. <clears throat> it does not need to be an airtight steel cube at 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters. If it's shorter, it'll still be alright. 5 meters is quite sufficient don't get me wrong, but if it they want to change the dimensions of it for some reason, there's no there's no compelling reason to stop them from doing so. So anyway, then we're going to go into there are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. This is a mistake. Whilst it is perfectly reasonable, I should say this is an example where they haven't gotten specific enough. There to be no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096 cell. First of all, I feel video surveillance or optical tools is probably insufficiently specific. But even if it were sufficiently specific, it shouldn't just be 096's cell. SCP-096, given its ability, if any time somebody views its face, which we haven't really quite talked about just yet, but anytime somebody views its face, whether it's a video recording, in person, a photograph, 3,000 miles away, the entity in instantaneously knows and eventually will go and kill them. And it will, and it's very difficult to keep uh, him away from his target. In fact, as far as it's been seen on the SCP Wiki, it's impossible to keep him away from his target, which means no barriers will stop him. Which means that the site he's on should be independent and video and surveillance or video surveillance and optical tools should not be allowed on the whole site or at least for the wing of the site not just the inside of the cell like i've seen so many fan like i, I think i even saw fan made um one of the more recent fan movies uh, which was an scp-096 containment breach had video surveillance of the outside of the cell why if he breaches the cell, it feels feels silly to me. Uh, but then the <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the pressure. There's nothing wrong with the pressure sensors and laser detectors uh, to ensure that's presence inside the cell. Though I feel it feels odd 
Feels like there are probably better ways to do that. Uh, anyway, any and all mo photo, video, or record. I was trying. I was thinking of motion sensors. Uh, any and all photos, video, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden. I get what they're saying, and I feel as though it is sufficient, but there is no reason for it to be so awkwardly worded as to possibly be misinterpreted by somebody else. Just because something is obvious to us who understand how this things work, uh, yeah, understand how this thing works, doesn't mean that it it's okay for the containment procedures to be vague and weird. They do need to be specific where they need to be specific. This is a, and this is the biggest problem I see in the uh, old style SCPs, especially old series one stuff. And I'm not saying anything about the people who like them. I'm not saying anything about the quality necessarily of the article, but you'll see overly specific. And then as they continue along, they get less and less specific and more and more vague and more and more awkwardly phrased until the point where sometimes you'll get to them and they could mean literally anything. So what you want to say here is the actions, you know, you're not allowed to take photographs. You're not allowed to make recordings of SCP-096's likeness and likenesses of SCP-096 that are found in the wild are to be confiscated and destroyed. So say that. Anyway, let's talk for a moment uh, about the actual anomaly itself. SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.3 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass. It's blah, blah, blah. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, <laughs> it's a monster description. The important part is that when you view it, it you, you, get the, you get the picture. I don't need it. Hopefully you don't get the picture, but... <laughs> You, you get the picture of what this is. Um, but it is a humanoid creature. And that means there are definitively ethical considerations uh, that you have to take into account with just, just with regards to its containment. So first of all, there's nothing that precludes, as far as we know, non-visual observation of SCP-096. And you might be like, what does that mean? Well, you can hear it. He's walking around just because you heard him doesn't mean that he's coming for you. And in fact, you can view technically SCP-096 as long as you don't view directly view its face. So what we understand about SCP-096, despite it being a sentient anomaly, there have to be certain strictly followed. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, strictly followed containment procedures So the actual terminology is, is exactly right there on the page because the risk and it's always a risk reward thing if certain procedures can prevent massive loss of life which scp-096 has escaped before and has caused massive loss of life so if very simple procedures can prevent that loss of life they should be taken uh, into consideration now what does this mean with scp-096 well Despite the fact that it is a sentient entity, they've already decided that it needs to be completely isolated from people. That's not necessarily a thing that has to happen. It's completely docile when you don't view its face. So, why not have every member of the containment team be blind? And we're talking about physically blind. It's important that it's not some sort of psychological blinding because something could... And, I, and you're like, what does that mean? Well, there is a difference between your eyes literally won't work and your brain can't process visual data, right? And there's differences in that too. So let's be clear about that. Make sure that everybody working on containment of SCP-096 is physically incapable of sight, right? just on the off chance that one of them gets their sight back at the wrong time. Now, it doesn't need to be alone. 70% of the people who are legally blind in America are unemployed for really no reason. It's sort of a stigma. You tell someone, hey, I'm blind and you're looking for a job, uh, that tends to uh, turn people off from the idea of hiring you. And there's not really much of a point to that or reason for it. And beyond that, it's discrimination on the basis of disability, but we're not talking about that because the SCP Foundation probably doesn't care about discrimination on the basis of disability. I, I like to think of them as a hyper-competent uh, organization, so 
they don't think on those terms. And in this particular case, and not just this case, there are plenty of SCPs, not 173, but there are plenty of SCPs that would be easier to contain if your expertise, or I should say your expert containment staff, were simply blind. And you can probably think of a couple off the top of your head right now, and I don't even have to name them. So SCP-096 is the one we're talking about here. So you don't have to leave SCP-096 alone. But at the same time, you don't have to subject it to whatever causes this terrible amount of pain and suffering. Because it seems like looking at its face causes it pain and suffering. You put it in a contained area where, and, and research can still be run on what it is, how it works, all these other things, in a responsible way with blind staff. Period. So much simpler. We have an additional solution for that, of course, and a lot of people will talk about this. And it's in the containment procedure, not necessarily in the containment procedures here, but it's in the containment uh, protocols for the MTFs that go after him, right? Put a bag over its head. Now, there are almost certainly ways to do this that are not inhumane, right? A bag is inhumane, but you could put a mask on this thing in do it in such a way as that it can see out and no one can see in you could you can do that right so put a mask on this thing make sure that the blind employee and the blind employees of the foundation ensure that mask is secure on a regular basis and even if it is and make sure that it is built out of something that won't be destroyed by it running head first through a concrete wall by the way or running at high speeds and whew, seeing it blown off but figure out a way to put a mask on this thing that isn't inhumane, which is entirely possible, that blocks view from the outside, but not from the inside, and give it the companionship of people who literally cannot see its face. Done. And make sure that all this takes place in a closed environment, right? And by the way, this is all about terrestrial containment. There are considerations for the possibilities of keeping it contained in outer space somewhere, perhaps on the moon, perhaps on a space station. None of those are really viable currently, so it's not really worth considering. But for terrestrial containment, they're really, and I, I say this uh, in kind of a, it's, there's a little bit of sadness to it because I, loved, would, I would love to make an ironclad containment here. There's no way to prevent to find all of the pictures of this thing unless you're thinking of some anomalous method which there may be but unless you use some sort of anomaly to locate these items there's no real way to find every photo every video that could potentially exist of this thing so you just kind of have to hope to keep it in a box and hope and not a small box build the box that i talked about earlier but keep it in that box and just hope and put a mask on it so that when it does get out, it doesn't additionally contaminate. And this is a nympho hazard sort of thing. Or I should say a cognito hazard more accurately. Uh, because once you are cognizant of its face, you have now you are now dead, essentially. It's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the truth. Make sure that other people can't be infected with the cognito hazard when it escapes. That is the best you can do. Anyway, that's it. If you have a better idea, and I know a lot of people probably like, put it in space, or put it on the moon. And I actually talked about this in one of my previous videos. You could conceivably attract it to, you know, uh, the outer solar system somehow. Send an astronaut out there, have them look at the picture, wait for him to get angry, and then whoosh, jump. It's going to take him four. Even if somehow he manages to make the exact... Uh, predictive calculations of where you're going to be when he gets to you, it's still going to take him hundreds of years at any, there's no speed he can make. It's going to take him hundreds or thousands of years to cross, cross even interplanetary space because space is really huge. Okay. Anyway, just wanted to go over some of the basics. If you have better ideas, let me know in the comments down below. And then hit the subscribe button. Carl, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. If you're watching my channel and you're not subscribed, what's wrong with you? Carl, this is 
This is why people don't like you. Okay? Just hit the subscribe button. And then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. It's so simple. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100, and Morgan, who has pledged at $40. It is nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday. It took me a second to remember what day it was. <laughs>